Let's take a check on the two sides that line up here. Leeds have Mathers at fullback, Calderwood, Walker, Senior and Bai. Sinfield captains the side at standoff alongside Burrow. The forwards, Bailey, Duneman and Ward, Lauatiti, Poaching and Jones Buchanan. And on the bench, it's Maguire, McDermott, Botham and Scruton, and the coach is Tony Smith. Now the Broncos, it's Luisi at fullback, Wells, Sykes, O'Halloran and Bradley Kualilala, Dawn and Luluai. Trindle, McLinden, Armour, Harmono, Hopkins and Lolohia. And the bench, it's occupied by Williams, Mabu, Tuki and Hyten and the coach, Tony Ray. But it's a cold grey night here at Headingley as Leeds return to Super League action after a big upset here on Easter Monday. But London, well, they earned the unwanted tag of becoming Leeds' first victims in Super League this year when they were beaten 22-24 to continue the Broncos' poor form away from home. OK, they did beat Hunslet just up the road from here, 70 points to four in the Cup last week. But in Super League, they've lost their last five away games stretching back to last season and the members of the South Stand will be expecting that Leeds will get back to winning ways in the Super League here tonight. The defeat by Wakefield ended their 17-match unbeaten home run in Super League's weekly rounds. That stretched all the way back to August 2003. They are a very demanding lot in this South Stand terrace, but Steve-O tonight, well, Ronnie the Rhino and company will hope that their men turn up and do the trick. A little bit of doubt sort of hanging over the Headingley camp at the moment in regards to the hiccup. Well played by Wakefield, of course, and uh, they struggled somewhat against the Warrington outfit. But this London side, the one thing you can expect tonight is some absolutely superb rugby league football. Tony Ray, their coach, is very confident. In fact, over the past few weeks, he has laid down the gauntlet in the capital city saying that they are playing the best rugby of either code, so come along and see them. But he, he's got to concentrate more on today. They just cannot win away from home. Yes, they've lost all three away so far in 2005. And Tony Smith has decided rather than watch over on the dressing room side of the field, he will join us up here on one of the three gantries that they have at Headingley. And, uh, well, he will hope that they wobbled a bit before getting the verdict in the Cup against Warrington a week ago. He will hope that they are going to put that sort of form behind them. The last away win for London, by the way, a Dennis Moran-inspired 28-22 victory at St Helens last August. And they've only won twice here at Headingley against Leeds in Super League 2019-96. But they famously won a Challenge Cup semi-final here against Castleford in 1999 that took them to Wembley, only to lose the final to the Leeds Rhinos. And these Southstanders will tell you very quickly, it was 52-16 and a record Wembley victory. And I reckon we'll get a very high score tonight. Great crowd. There's Richard Silverwood, the man in charge tonight. And you're right about the high scoring, Steve-O. Leeds, 53 tries, the best attack. London, not far behind them, 48 tries. These two teams know their way to the line. And I don't think they'll hold back either. That's why a big crowd has turned up here. And I'm sure that we will witness one heck of a game. OK, it's going to be the London Broncos who get us underway. The left boot of Paul Sykes. It's high, it's towards the corner, and Marcus Bai collects it for the Rhinos. A great chase from the kickoff, good tackling there in the end. And it was uh, Anthony Armour who got the first tackle of the match in on Marcus Bai. The one problem that the Broncos have had is in and around the Rook area. They really have been cut apart in that department, and uh, I do know that Tony Ray has worked very hard and make sure that they do work hard, first and second markers. They're doing that already. Can they do it for the full 80? That was Andrew Duneman, and he gets the ball away and ducking under the challenges. A great run here from Willie Poaching. Normally he's introduced as a substitute during the course of the match, starting this game from the beginning, and Sinfield with the kick over the top and down towards the corner. 
and Luisi, the fullback, collects it, but a great chase from Zinfield's kick, led by Marcus Bai and Keith Senior. Well, I think we saw there very quickly the second row Penalty. when approaching. High tackle by Jones Buchanan. A silly high shot as well. Didn't have to do it. One thing making your mark and showing how tough you are, but they were in a great position. It was a good kick from Kevin Sinfield. But I'm just trying to make that point that Willie Poaching, as you said, he normally comes off the bench. It looks to me as though his coach has said, give me a good 20 minutes. Here's Mark O'Halloran. Good run from him, just over the halfway line, inside the Leeds half of the field. The dummy half is McClendon, that's Lulawai, and this now is Lola here. Ryan Bailey eventually gets him to the ground, McClendon in again at dummy half. Looking for Lulawai and finds him. And it's Solomon Hamono now, and he slipped the pass, and London keep it going, this is Lulawai again. Lulawai wide to Paul Sykes. Sykes watched all the way by Chef Walker and little Rob Burrow. McClendon, and he's lost the ball, and it's a knock-on, says Richard Silverwood. Paul Sykes, protesting his innocence, was looking for a penalty for a steal that wasn't forthcoming from the referee. Well, it's important that uh, the man has to secure the football, fail to do that. Silly messing around there by uh, Chef Walker. Let's get an early word from... Dave Hadfield, who is on the press benches, the men, of course, who will select the man of the match. And let's get some early thoughts from him about possible contenders tonight. Dave. Leeds haven't been quite at their best for the last couple of games, have they? But tonight, maybe it's uh, the return of Ali Lautiti that could be the catalyst that could get them really firing again. If there was an award for the most improved Leeds player this season, it would undoubtedly go to Liam Botham. His enthusiasm has never been in doubt, but he's really learning how to play this game now. Some eye-catching some eye performances from him. Everybody knows by now how well the London Broncos recruited over the winter, but it's perhaps a couple of the players who didn't come over here with huge reputations have been the very best. Luke Dawes has been outstanding at standoff, and Lee Hopkins, not the biggest second row, but a real all action performer in the second row. We'll be looking out for him tonight. OK, Dave, we'll hear from you with about five minutes to go. It's Thomas Lulawai for the London Broncos now. Finding it difficult to get away through this Leeds defence. Mark McClendon in at dummy half. Of course, uh, Neil Budworth out for the rest of the season, so likely that McClendon will stay there for much of the campaign. Interesting, Eddie. I bumped into him in uh, Leeds. He was doing some shopping at lunchtime, and uh, I said, how are you handling the hooking role? He said, yeah, I'm getting used to it. <laughs> it's the last tackle, and there he is again, McClendon. He's a dummy half. He finds Lulawai, a little stab, and looking for the runner. The runner was Lee Hopkins, and it's well picked up by Richard Mathers, and Mathers will counter-attack. What a great fend! And here comes Richard Mathers. And London try and get him to the touchline. He bashed Luisi off twice. That and now he has got Bradley Kualala all over him. That was poor play by the fullback Luisi. Here is Keith Senior. And Senior with the strength. He stays in the field of play only just. Marcus Bai is a dummy half. Here is Andrew Duneman. Duneman dancing. Fine Senior. And Senior. Tries to get away from the would-be tacklers, but uh, Trundle comes in and finishes him off with Lola here. And this now is Ali Lawatiti driving for the line for the Rhino. He's, got, He's got the ball down. What strength. Try is given. Dave Hatfield said the men in the press benches think that Lawatiti might well be the catalyst. And Lawatiti has come up with the first try of the night. Great start for the Broncos. Well, I must say, Leeds should put their try down to the run from Richard Mathers. Kick through, Hopkins put a lot of pressure, but he was on his own. But watch the poor attempt from Luisi. Went at him first, then he went high yet again. How many times do they have to learn? They've got to go low for, get down on their legs, and they were slow on the blind side. Sheared up a body strength here. There's five there, and he still gets it. Only has to hit the whitewash. One, two, three, four, five. And yet, he comes up with four. It doesn't equate, but the Leeds fans are happy. Well, Ali Lautiti has missed the last two matches. He went home because of a family bereavement in New Zealand. And he has come back, and he has marked his return with his third try of this Super League campaign. The New Zealand international. And he was missed when the Rhinos lost their unbeaten record here against Wakefield last time out. Now, Kevin Sinfield... 
Actually, looking around some of these Leeds players, Dunerman has had his head shaved, and by the looks of things, Kevin Sinfield has had a visit to the Barbers as well. But he has hit the post with his first conversion attempt. Leeds ahead, though, 4-0. Phil? Fantastic start. The one thing you've got to try and do when you play against the Leeds side is prevent their offloads. You've got to control not only the man running with the ball, but the ball when you have as well. There it is, you see the full-man, Luis, he goes high, fends him away, goes again, you've got to go for the legs here. They had to scramble, this guy went on the blind side. So Paul Sykes restarts, deep kick off to the corner again, taken on the fall by Mathers, here comes Marcus By. Almost seven minutes on the watch, great start for Leeds. We have the Hull coach, John Keir, alongside us tonight as our special guest. Early impressions, John? Well, I've been looking forward to this, Eddie, because we've got two great attacking sides out there, but uh, at the minute, Leeds are dominating possession. They're looking very hungry after their last outing on uh, Easter Monday when uh, Wakefield really gave them a bit of a shellacking, and they're obviously sore about that, and they're trying to rectify that, and there's been some great starts uh, out there from the Rhinos. And the fact that London have lost all their matches away from home so far, their confidence on the road is a little low. Exactly right, but uh, it's got to come to an end sometime, Eddie, and uh, we're better than the league leaders. Okay, okay. Sinfield with a left-footed kick downfield. It's picked up by Luis the full-back. He will try and run this back. And he gets as far as Bailey, who just grabs him by the collar and drops him to the ground. Well, the two coaches, Tony Ray and Tony Smith, of course, from Australia, both great friends off the field. And they uh, regularly talked and chat to each other on the telephone during the course of a week. Little doubt that Tony Smith also feels that Sebastian Luisi is a bit of a problem. If you notice on the two on the two kicks, Eddie, they've kicked directly to him. Obviously expecting a mistake from him. Lulawai with the kick over the top of all the defenders and it skips smartly away. Oh, and uh, Mathers, did he get a fingertip to that and did he knock it over the touchline? I think he did. Yes, it's going to be head yep. and feed here to London. Well, that's a mistake from Mathers. Well, he tried to palm it back inside so he could pick it up on the in-goal area. Yeah, I, th I think he was uh, going for the 40-20, so he was trying. To, he knew that it was going to be possession one way or the other, and then tried to flick it through. But it wasn't a 40-20, was it? No, it was just outside. But it's obvious, Eddie, as well, that there's a fair wind behind the uh, London Broncos, and uh, the Ulai there really making you full use of that with an excellent kick. And uh, Mathers obviously just misread the situation. Indeed. So this is Paul Sykes trying to level the scores. This is a great opportunity for the Broncos, and here they come. This is Hopkins, and that's a good tackle by Keith Senior, close to his own try line. McLinden again, the man at dummy half, and he gets the ball to Trindle. And he is grounded by good tackling from Danny Ward and company. Now What's then, it's Luluai. Luluai gets the pass away, and that is Luke Dorn. Watch for the inside run now. McLinden should go on his own. Penalty. Willie Poaching was all over the top of Luke Dorn. Well, I'd take the quick tap, they haven't had much. And that's what they do. The referee has to blow the whistle the second time before they can get on with it. I think he took it from the wrong spot as well. And this is McLinden now. Luluai, looking for the runner, Ooh. who is Trindle. Looked a bit dodgy, got away with it. McLinden again. Lulawai once more, Luke Dorn will take over, good reverse pass to Hopkins, impressing a lot of people this Lee Hopkins, and so is this fellow McClendon, but that's good tackling by Lawatiti. Wouldn't take the dummy then, wouldn't be fooled, but they're very close to the line still, the Broncos, with Lulawai, he'll hoist the kick wide, Calderwood is underneath this, Wells is after it, and where is the ball? It's amongst all of that, it's a knock-on, says the referee. Well, and Collier it's going to be head and feet yeah. to the Broncos again. Well, Collar would definitely got a fingertip to it. What we've got to look at is, was he interfered with? Well, they were both going for the football, and you see Calderwood definitely the knock-on. Could have gone either way, John Wells putting a lot of pressure. And talking of pressure, this is yet more pressure on the Leeds defence from London. Sykes is wheeled to the ground. This is a huge test of the Leeds defenders now. And it's with Lulawai. He just delayed the pass, got the ball to Lola here. Just a little bit flat to London in their attack. Stand a little bit uh, deeper, run here, onto the football a bit. Here is Lulawai. 
another dummy flicks the ball back and Luke Dorn takes over once again running flat across the face gets it away though to Harmono Harmono gets the pass in and the ball well he held it back and he got the pass away somehow that was a forward pass the last one did well on it players haven't heard that uh, what the knock on the first time got to it juggled it back and it's definite knock on from this one or a forward pass should I say Oh, maybe not from that no, angle. The referee has just said a knock on. Well, there, were, there wasn't one. I thought well, he, he got it. He and the touch judge thought there was. Hold, I thought hold, that, it, well, hold, it went hold, backwards. Hold. I thought he got him for a forward pass. Got to it. That's not a knock on. Leeds have the possession. Here is Marcus Bai. Unless it went forward and then bounced back off the Leeds player. But anyway, look, it's academic now, and London have given away a penalty for offside. The biggest problem that the Broncos are having at the moment is that they're just going very high in defence. Can't afford to do that. Every time they've got leads down in their own quarter, they've allowed the Rhinos to have the luxury of getting to the halfway line before they even settle for the kick on the fifth tackle. Got a little glimpse there of Tony Ray, the London coach, as his men give away another penalty which won't please him. Ian Milward is the longest serving coach in Super League at St Helens, but Tony Ray actually played in 1996. That's a knock on, and that is a big error. Not even got to the first tackle. Yes, Andrew Duneman with the mistake. He is doing a great job, though, this year with Matt Diskin out for such a long time. This is Sebastian Luisi again. It's amazing how the halfbacks just have to settle into the, the hooking row, both London and Leeds, without their regular hookers. Hamono will play the ball, and on the charge comes forward again Lola here, junior Kiwi international in 1998, alongside Ali Lawatiti, by the way. Well, they're trying to play fancy football, London, but they've got to get back to basics. They've got to start using the big forwards. McLinden again, and once more, it's Lola here. They seem to be lacking a bit of spark. They need firing up somehow. McLinden will try that down the short side. He's almost through. The ball goes all over the shop. It's hacked forward in the end, and it will wend its way to the touchline. It's Rhino's head and feed at the resulting scrum here. Well, I can't believe that they, they opted for the kick. It wasn't on the final tackle. Romano really should have just thrown himself onto the football. Then. One cap for Australia, two caps for Tonga in the 1995 World Cup, Solomon Hamono. And he played for New South Wales in 1997 in the Super League era down under. 14 minutes gone, Leeds, well, 4-0 up, having the better of the possession, but not doing all that they might with it. Duneman, Lautiti, Lautiti wide, it's Marcus Pai, that's a good tackle. That's a terrific tackle by Bradley Kualilala. Danny Wall, good run by the prop forward there. That's the difference between the two sides. Look at the momentum that they're getting leads. Great ball from Dunaman to Sinfield. Great offload to Lauertiti. Oh, how's that to Mathers? Now they're lined up down the right-hand side. It goes over the top to Mark Calderwood. Calderwood taking on the Sykes. It was a bit high from Sykes. And he is not in touch. Stay, saved himself in the field of play somehow. This is the last tackle. Dunaman slides the kick in. Back it comes. And it's free, it's going to be play on, and this is Calderwood again, and he's in touch this time. Well, that was a schmozzle and it's, a half. It certainly was, but the wonderful skills there of Ali Lautiti got him into that situation there. Went on the blind side. I'm not so sure that he wasn't out on the, uh, on the first instance. Did well, didn't he? Well, they, sh they, they got him elbow, on the second, yeah. But it was too late. It's London's head and feed at the scrum. Leeds is mistake. I've been a bit pedantic on that, but shouldn't that be a penalty? Pro probably so, actually, in the in the current uh, climate, yes. If Lee Hopkins. If he's called held and he moves him again, then it's got to be penalised. 
they just offload. They're just making no progress. Look at that. They're going sideways. A lot of offloads. Not advancing forward. Ryan Bailey, referee shouting to leave him. And that's Trindle who will play the ball to McClendon. That's touched, but was it an attempted charge down? It's academic anyway, it's not going to find its way to the touchline, is it? Mathers having a bit of a mess, a bit of a job to get that in. Wells doing really well. And Calderwood coming to the rescue for Leeds. Again going high. Can't afford to do that when, you know, Leeds have got the likes of this man playing the ball, Calderwood. Marcus Pye on the other end. John Keir made a very good point about this win that's uh, blowing strongly from left to right as we watch, right at the backs of the London Broncos. And when they do manage to get a good kick in, it certainly is taking the ball a few further metres downfield. And Mathers has been caught a couple of times. He's Ryan Bailey. Becoming one of the most feared prop forwards in the Super League, this fellow Bailey. He certainly roughed the Bulldogs up in that World Club Challenge, remember, in February, when Leeds claimed the world title. And Burrow's kick is straight into the arms of Luisi. Poor one. And Luisi holding the ball one hand. Oh! The horn was high. Well, I've seen him get sent off for that. That looked to me as though he picked his mark. Um, he's got blood coming down his, uh, his nose. Maybe that could be a squared up. But that is not the best place to do it. Bang. He knew exactly what he was doing there. Oh. That, I've seen them get sent off for that, Eddie. Looks awful, doesn't it? It is awful, Phil. Bang. He knew exactly where he was going. He knew exactly what he was going to do. There's no even any thought of anyone saying it was a lazy tackle. This will go on report. It better do. Well, the, the touch judge just come on over on the far side. He came on a little belatedly. It's very rare, isn't it, Eddie, that you see a player sent off these days? It is. Goes on report. It's, some people claim the easy option for the referee is to place things on report and let somebody else deal with it. And I, I know that they keep saying it, but you can't send anybody to the sin bin for foul play. You've either fouled or you have not. The sooner we get over that problem, because they really have not been penalised, have they? No, they haven't. And there was They've still least... got 13 players on the field. At least if they were off for 10 minutes, it would give the advantage to the side who's uh, been hit in the face. Well, there was at least one uh, Super League coach who was uh, expressing those sentiments last week. This is Hopkins. He gets the ball away to O'Halloran. And London will look to try and make more progress here. Hopkins once again gets the ball away, but it's pinched. Interception there by Ryan Bailey. Quick thinking. Here is Jamie Jones Buchanan. That came about because they were so flat. Good work from the Leeds centre, but they've got to really sort themselves out. I think Leeds are just playing a bit of cat and mouse here, just uh, slowly but surely, just grinding their way. I think they know, even now, that they're confident they can rip this London Broncos side apart. Barry McDermott is on, there he is. His 260th Leeds appearance tonight. And Sinfield hoists the kick, now that will hang in the wind, and Calderwood's after this. Oh, but John Wells got it, and Sykes helped out there. He acted as, almost as a guard for uh, for John Wells. That was tremendous play there. You can see straight. Actually, Mark Calderwood almost tackled the wrong map. Well, to be fair, you can see John Wells. He shouted, "It's mine!" And therefore, Paul Sykes said, "Well, I'll just do the shepherd, get in front." This is Mark Tukey who will play the ball, and that's Nick Bradley Kualalawa. That's a good move, I feel, by Tony Ray to bring Mark Tuga. This is a see him shouting, it's mine. That was excellent play, but great move by Tony Ray. They need someone. Mark Tuki really needs to lift them in the forwards, Phil. He does, certainly does. Here's a little chip over here now. Don goes racing through, but I think Burrow will beat him to it. I'm just going to ask John Keir the question. Do you think that's quite a conservative opening quarter there from the Leeds Rhinos? I mean, on the back of a losing the home record, they've been very strong defensively. I suppose that's the first out of your half of your game. But in offence, 
fewer offloads really than we've seen so far from them this season. I agree with you, Phil. That may well have been a target for them to uh, control the football early on, especially before they start offloading the ball. But London certainly haven't taken that philosophy. Their philosophy is uh, to promote the football at, at all the events. There's a high shot from Mark McClendon. That should have brought a penalty. It's getting a bit rough this, and that was forward. Well, it was. Now a TT will dispute that. It was right beneath us, and it was it was a very 50-50 call. Yeah, On that forward. angle, it looks forward, but from yeah. up here, I'm not sure. It's this side of the field, though, where Leeds look most dangerous. Yeah, that's forward. Lower TT senior by on this left edge here. London do have a few problems. Yeah, you're right, Phil, but the, the interesting thing as well is that uh, they've got Hopkins out here defending on the right and Solomona defending on the left, and that's a reversal of the normal roles that uh, London play. London will be pleased with this situation, 4-0 down, that's all, and here is Joe Mabu, he's featured in the last five, beginning to get established in the side this season, the big fella, and a drive forward here from Lola here. That's much better. Getting the momentum, they're getting over the advantage line. John Wells again, trying to go up the middle. Chev Walker and Jamie Jones Buchanan bring him down. Four tackles gone, two remaining. McClendon to Dawn. Not the best play, the ball. Dawn again, stabbing the ball down towards the corner flag and it finds its way to touch. He'll be happy with that. They didn't come up with any points, but at least they can apply the pressure. Well, Danny Ward's on report. He's also off the field at the moment, getting patched up. Bill? Well, yeah, you're saying that uh, justice hasn't been done. I'm not so sure Danny Ward would agree with that at the moment because he's suffering for his sins there. You can see they can't stop the bleeding. And he's got a really nasty bang on the nose and uh, they're tr trying very hard to stem the tide at the moment. But uh, I think he's in a bit of pain. And did you notice who was sitting next to Danny Ward on the bench there with the headphones on? One Francis Cummins, who made his comeback in midweek in the junior game. A junior game, he's, uh, he's certainly not under 21. It was against Keithley, and Tony Smith was delighted to see Francis Cummins back, because if he gets himself fit again, as I'm sure that's his intention, he would be a very useful acquisition in this squad. This is Duneman, meat in a London sandwich then. It's getting chasey out there. Sinfield finds Ryan Bailey. I get the impression he you just know, brushes away from McClendon. Up. McClendon was trying to pinch the ball. He's still going, Ryan Bailey. In the end, he's all down. And there was five rugby attacking the defender, should I say, that still went high. High hanging kick again. It'll hang in the breeze. It comes back, and Poaching gets a stroll in. Poaching will improve the angle, and Leeds get the second try. Well, that ball hung in the breeze and it came back like a bullet to poaching. And he had the presence of mind to actually step inside the defender and improve the angle for Sinfield's conversion to come. Well, I didn't really think that the Rhinos could go on the prowl. It's normally the lion or the tiger. And I just get that the feeling from this lead out that they've just been waiting to take their opportunities and it was a high kick. They came up with a knock-on, Poaching says thank you very much indeed. Neat step around the fullback, Luisi. They've not got into top gear, and yet they've come up with two good tries. Poaching in. And credit Mark Calderwood with the jump and the flick back for Willie Poaching. That was terrific work from the winger over on the far side. Here is Sinfield with the conversion attempt, and he finds the mark this time. Leads into double figures, it's 10-0. Well, both tries have come about from Leeds coming from their own half across the halfway line because of the poor defence by the Broncos. Tony Ray has got to get the message out there. Come on, fellas. We want more enthusiasm, especially in the forwards, but get this defensive line sorted out otherwise they're looking down the barrel of a very very hefty score Willie Poaching enjoying his second start of the year in the second row he did also start at hooker against the Wildcats and he managed to try against London here in 2003 oh, got they got away with it, with it didn't they Mathers yeah. he looks a little bit dodgy tonight compared to normal 
No, is it the wind? tipped it on to Marcus Oh, Beyer. OK, that's a planned move, Phil, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's oh, spe okay. speeds it all up, that. <laughs> this is Lauatiti. The wind that uh, John Keir talked about is obviously causing a few problems for the defence, John. It is, yeah, and I think that those kickoffs are really interesting from Paul Sykes because you can see how he tees the ball up and kicks it. It's like a spiral, and I think that's why Richie Mathers had such a difficulty feeling that kick on the full. Here's Burrow trying to make some progress, gets the ball wide, and Chef Walker keeps going, another 5, 10 metres, terrific work from the big centre. It's Burrow again. And poaching, oh, he ducks under one challenge, and he almost gets the ball away. In fact, he does get the ball away to Calderwood. Leeds are starting to find their paces here. Well, it's paper thin, is this uh, London defence? Burrow to Sinfield, and here is Jamie Jones Buchanan. Ball slipped away, Mathers onto Lauatiti Senior. The queuing up, the queuing up. Senior scores. And a little shake of the head ruefully from Tony Ray. But suddenly, Leeds have got the right mix. They have waited and they have waited. They have taken a bit of the life out of London. And they are suddenly starting to click. Keith Senior, his 90th try for Leeds, that. Very simple build-up. Good work there. Offload. Jamie Jules Buchanan was the offload there and Senior goes in. But again, it all came about from very poor defence. Four or five chances, and they all went high. It's as though London don't even know what legs are all about. They're the ones that are touching the ground, fellas. Well, Keith Senior made his London, his Leeds debut, rather, against London here in September 1999. And he has just scored the try that allows Sinfield to try and add the extras, but that wind just drifts it away from the posts. 14-0, though, the Rhinos ahead. Well, it's going to be a busy night for the man who's in charge of the scoreboard. There's a wind that obviously is going to be a great advantage. Yes. Especially in the second half to uh, the Rhinos' outfit. And they've got some kickers who can exploit that field. They have, yeah. You know, it's amazing that kickoff. They almost won possession back, didn't they, the London Broncos? But uh, luckily it went into Marcus Byers' arms. The, the worrying thing for London Broncos, and what you can't tell on television, is the power that some of these players have. For the first 20 minutes, it wasn't that evident. But the power that the lead side have developed meant that they could take the ball the length of the field and score back-to-back -back try on the fifth tackle. And really, as this first half wears on, that's a very worrying time here for London, unless they can really up their uh, their efforts and the technique in defence. You talk about sorry, Steve, 13 missed tackles by yeah, London. What the, and it's going to be oh, that's a knock on. That'll be the play on. At least they've had a little bit of luxury there. It was Maguire who got a real heavy challenge. There's a problem for London player. It's uh... oh, this is the fullback, Luisi. Tackled by Chev Walker, and here is Joe Mabu. It's ten David, meters away. David Heighton has a bit big problem. Now then, Thomas Luluai. Oh, he's ghosting through. He's got Mathers with him, but Luluai has scored. Luluai touches down. He just stepped inside the challenges then. And Mathers couldn't get the tackle in, well, he got to him, but he couldn't prevent him from touching down. Luluai with the try for London, and it's just what they need, really, to settle them down. Boy, they needed that, as you say, Eddie. This guy's settling ever so well, hasn't he, into this country. Luluai came about by the big hit, and it was a big hit. Trouble is, it, uh, I think it hurt David Hyden, he was down receiving treatment. And the one thing that London have not been doing, Leeds have just had a carbon copy. Nice step. Pat a cake, pat a cake. Well, we can sit back and enjoy the luxury of some of these tries, and I'm sure there's going to be more and more points scored. L London got the possession after uh, Danny Maguire was hit really hard. The ball came free and they made full use of it. And here is Paul Sykes to add the extras, he hopes which he does, so Sykes with the goal and Thomas Lulawai with the try and of course memories of 
James Luluai for Hull, all those years ago scoring tries on this ground against Leeds. John Keir, so many missed tackles, you'd have to be a concerned coach. Yeah, you'd be concerned, uh, 13 missed tackles, it's a, a great number at the minute, but Leeds do make you work very hard with their uh, offload game, which is becoming more and more prominent as the half progressing. But you've got to give a rap as well, Steve, out to that uh, marvellous defensive hit that forced the error that gave the field position to the London Broncos that Lulai uh, took advantage of. Liam Botham is on, number 21. The coaches both ringing the changes here. London, though, back in the match here, 14 6 down. Oh, went without it then, David Hyten. And it seemed actually to go through his legs, but the referee sees it another way. Well, that went backwards, didn't it? But he obviously feels the official that uh, no control constitutes a knock on. Well, in this game, any fumble of hand is dropped on by referees. Most of the time. This is Maguire now. And he brushes Luisi off again. Well, I've got to get to this, that's legs. Duneman and Sinfield. Sinfield can't get the ball away, but he gets to the 10 metre line on the second tackle. Duneman again. McDermott was the dummy runner, so he finds Maguire. It's Burrow, and Burrow brings both of them into it. Running Good strongly. Run. Great run there. Came back on the angle. Not running straight. Stretching the defence. Maguire once more. Great ball to Sinfield. He was hammered by O'Halloran as he received that. It's Duneman. And Duneman with the looping pass to Botham again. And Botham fancies his chances here. Steps out of the challenges. And it's Duneman again. That'll be the turnover. In possession. A little bit scrappy there. Surprised me that Leeds. Well, they were panicking at 14 6 in a good position. They've got to learn to just completely slow things down and control the football. They got a bit impatient there, did the Rhinos. John Wells trying to scamper away from dummy half and make some good metres too. I, I mentioned to, to Tony Smith last night, uh, Phil, when he was our guest at. Huddersfield, whether he thought the champions were wobbling, he, he sort of brushed away the question, really, he said he didn't think so. I suppose you wouldn't expect anything else, but do you think they are wobbling a bit? I think they're not playing anything like they were three or four weeks ago. I mean, they went to uh, play Huddersfield at the Gulf Farm Stadium, and really it was classic rugby league. They, they destroyed the Giants on that occasion, but they haven't been able to play like that since. I think they defended pretty well this half, and they, they missed tackle for the try. You're going to have to do some defending here, though, now, because London is starting to offload. And that's Dawn, and this is Lulawai again. And wide it goes to Paul Sykes, brilliant pass, and again a great offload. Joe Mabu, man out wide is John Wells, and Leeds muscle up in defence in the end. Great tackle from Chev Walker. Wonderful Try sweeping saver. move, and the ball has Penalty. come free. It's a knock-on oh. against Wells. Well, Wells gave himself up. But what a cruncher from uh, Chev Walker. But what a sweeping move at the end of this. Well, then, was it dragged out? Well, there's certainly hands around there. Chev Walker's been around long enough. Yep, he pulled it. Should have been a penalty. Let's go. Let's go. Good what a work. move, though. What a wonderful sweeping move from the Broncos. It certainly was. Good quality, and they got around to it, but this is where they're falling down. They get the Leeds in a good position. Then they forget to tackle. They're pretty hard to stop some of these guys, though, Steve. Or Marcus Pye, you never see him close up. He's like the width of a double door. He's so wide on him. And, uh, I know, it doesn't matter how wide, how big or strong, they can't run with the legs with tackles. But the other problem, if you do go for the legs when you play against the Leeds Reynolds, he'll just offload to somebody around him, and then that comes on. You're defending you in, in reverse gear penalty now to the Rhinos. I mean, it's obvious to... This man, Tony Ray, has said we've got to stop the offload, but if you're going to stop the offload, make sure that somebody's going down on the ankles. They have got back into the, an attacking position with so much ease of the Rhinos in this game. This is Liam Botham. He is featured in the last five. Of course, he had eight matches on loan with London only last year. And he kicked the goal that got London a 36-all draw against the Rhinos last year. I think that did him a world of good as well. Gave him plenty of game time. 
Duneman plays the ball to Rod Burrow. It's with Maguire who finds Lauatiti. Oh, brilliant through the legs. Was he held though? And Ward is back. Duneman again. Rob Burrow. Sinfield pops it up. Both them. <laughs> Gets the ball away. Duneman. Wide it goes. Sinfield. Wide of Sill to Chev Walker. And Walker on the last tackle. Tries to play the ball. Now does. Ball is stabbed to the in goal area. And it is run over the dead ball line by Paul Sykes. A lot better from the Rhinos. Took the time. Didn't panic. Well, they're trying to find the key leads, aren't they? They're trying to find the key to unlock this defence. It's a great time to win a goal line drop out here now. Just what four minutes at half time? Perfect time. And we saw the Giants yesterday could lift. You need to put something in specially now. An extra effort, a bit more power in that run. Get the arms free for the offload because here's a chance to get a great time try before half time. Mind you, with this wind at their backs, this goal line drop out could well end up way up the other end of the field. Sykes will give this some humph. Way over the halfway line, Lavatiti took that a little awkwardly, but uh, look at him, he comes forward with the ball on just one hand. Trindle got the tackle in. Well, we saw the replay, didn't have that uh, wonderful offload through his, through his legs. Such a talent, wonderful ball control. Sinfield plays the ball to Duneman, here is Maguire, ball on the inside to Danny Ward. Good tackle by Trindle. And Danny Ward is still bleeding badly, so he has to go off the field. So Richie Mathers will play the ball to Duneman, to Bailey. Bailey is grounded 12 metres short of the line. Duneman, Maguire. Maguire with the pass to Lauatiti. Lauatiti takes some stopping, he gets it away to Maguire, who will score! If you don't trap the ball in hand, he can offload it from impossible situations. And he's laid on a plate Danny Maguire's try on this is 80th appearance for the Rhinos. Psychologically, it's a bit of blow for the London side, but as you say, Eddie, this guy is just superb. Just rampages through to the dummy. Watch how he looks back on the inside, it's amazing. It's as though he looks with his eyes and say to him, back on the disappointment on the, on the face of Tony Ray. And he knows it too. Remarkably, for a young man who scored 39 tries last year, that's his first in Super League, but he has been out injured this season, Danny Maguire. But he is a great, great British talent, and there's another one as well, Kevin Sinfield. Battling his way back to fitness, Danny Maguire, after the groin operation. And that try will do him the world of good. Now, Sinfield, who began the match needing six points for a thousand in his career, and there's two more of them, so he's too short of that milestone now, Kevin Sinfield. Two more points for 1,000. And I hate to say it again, I just feel that the Rhinos have not even started to get into third gear, never mind top gear. And with a win behind their backs, in that second stanza, I really fear for the London side. Tony Ray will be happy to get them in at half time, try to uh, well, stem the tide, because it's going to be coming in the second half. Mathers to Marcus Bai. He's halted 20 metres away from his own line. And Duneman is in there at dummy half. Sinfield, Rob Burrow. There he goes, quick heels, hasn't he, little Rob Burrow? And he's reveling in this uh, opportunity. This is his eighth consecutive start, and he's benefiting from it. And here is Sinfield, he's got Maguire. And Maguire is just collared in time. It was an important oh, he's tackle, injured. that, and he is injured. He is injured. He was trying Luke to... Off... got to him. He was trying to offload at the time when he just got caught. So, therefore, it exposed the shoulder, and I think he's taking the full brunt and Tony Smith is anxious. Beautiful play by Sinfield. Just got to him, you see he was trying to... Oh. 
When you're trying to offload there, they just thought about it. Watch. Looks to I'm trying to offload and bang. That would have jarred the shoulder no end. The referee has told Liam Botham to take the ball off uh, Danny Maguire and let's get going again. Which is the way it is in rugby league. No sentiment for the injured player in this sport unless he's in a real, real problem and then the referee wisely stops the clock and stops the game and we all wait to see what happens. And that pass from Burrow found senior. Well, if Leeds, if Leeds go ahead, I just can't see the Broncos getting back into it. Duneman. Infield to Sinfield. Maguire is still out there, he's been patched up. The kick's looking for Calderwood. Oh, and the ball's all over the shot. And was that offside? It was a knock-on anyway. Leeds head and feed. Not enough time, though, I don't think. Leeds will hurry to get this packed down. All over the place, no doubt about it. It was a knock-on from John Wells. And he's saying, get in the scrum. The leads are formed, leads are ready, so that's why the clock is stopped. They, they're, they're pointing. <laughs> well, they're now formed. And this is Walker who finds Maguire, who finds Burrow. And Burrow straightens it up. That should just about do it. One quick play, the ball maybe. And Mathers with the kick wide, looking for Walker out there. And Walker's got it! And Walker gets the fly. And look at the time. 40 minutes gone. And there's the try for the Leeds Rhinos and Chev Walker. He's in a great, great run of form. Is Chev Walker. But that was a wonderfully floated kick by Richard Mathers. Seconds. And he just takes it as Walker with ease. Not the best jump from John Wells. Remember the build-up to it, John Wells wasn't very happy with going for it. Was he pushed away? Either way, they were both going for the same ball. And that is play on. That is a great take. Good kick by the fullback, Richard Mathers. And I'm afraid London, they're sunk. Well, maybe they will believe that they can come out in the second half and they can uh, mount a challenge. Chef Walker, though, right on the stroke of half-time. And an important kick coming up here for Kevin Sinfield. I don't know whether he is aware, but this Super League's top goal kicker, he has got this kick for a 1,000 points in his career. It's on its way. And he notches a wonderful milestone, Kevin Sinfield. 1,000 points. But more importantly, he gives Leeds a 26-6 advantage at half-time. Well, Leeds took about 20 minutes to get going, and then they found exactly the right mix. And they have scored 26 points. Tony, Ray, uh, Tony Smith rather will be a little concerned that maybe they conceded six, but that's the way it stands at half-time. And they've had to do a bit more work in the tackling department, but they have missed 18 tackles already. And Leeds have made 10 clean breaks. And 19 minutes Leeds have spent in the opposition half of the field. There are the top performers in the three disciplines. What I wondered about is that they only had five minutes in the Leeds half with possession. You can't afford to do that. Add that to the 18 missed tackles that you were mentioning. Big problem. Well, there's no Gareth Ellis out there for the Leeds Rhinos, but he's on the sideline talking to Bill. Gareth, it took a while for them to get there, but they do look to be in control, the Rhinos. Yeah, I think it was a good half for rugby for, for Leeds. Um, I think Keith Seed has been particularly dangerous down the left-hand side, and the more ball we get to him, I think the better. The kicking game seems to be causing the opposition plenty of problems. Yeah, it's something that we've been working hard on in training. Uh, I know Kevin's been paying particular attention to his kicking because it's been poor in the past, but we've, we've really uh, put some good kicks in today and they've come up with the points. We're going to see uh, an avalanche in the second half, do you think? I'd, I'd hope so, but I think you know, London are a very dangerous team, particularly in the backs, and uh, they can lay a foundation in the forwards. It's going to be tough, but I hope you know, that we'll get a few more points. Thanks, and all the best with the knee. Thank you very much, thanks a lot. Yes, out for a couple of weeks, Gareth Ellis. 
Just needed the knee cleaning up a bit, according to uh, his coach, Tony Smith. And he will not play anybody who isn't 100%. And, of course, uh, he didn't do that all the way through last year. And there were not too many who weren't 100% last year, to be fair. That is for sure, and it's and a they've good... Been, you know, they've been good without the likes of uh, Maguire and, and Diskin this year. And it's a good move by the coach as well. If you, if you have a problem with somebody, that's a high shot. If you can have a problem with someone, that you may as well get it done early in the season and bring him back to uh, the business end. I think Luke Dawn just realised how strong that wind is in the face of the London Broncos. He put that kick up and it went, well, just straight up and down in the air, didn't he? He wanted it to go forward towards the Leeds line. Have to put it uh, far harder downfield if they want to gain ground on kicks. And he wore his return in the second half with the nose now not bleeding. This is Liam Botham. And Duneman finds Sinfi, who in turn finds Richie Mathers. That's the last tackle for Leeds. Duneman again, Sinfi, wide it goes to Maguire. And uh, further wide and uh, off the knee, shin or boot of Keith Senior. Very flat there, not a good pass either. Just that last piece, just the play before this, as the ball goes out of play. You saw Richie Mathers as a fullback. He actually plays up in the line, almost like a, a second standoff, doesn't he, in centre field? It's quite a different way of which the uh, some teams are using the fullback. Oh, a mistake by O'Halloran. Well, he took his eyes off the football. It's as simple as that. They're not getting the basics right. He saw Sinfield closing in, didn't he? Yep. And a little look that was coming at him. The ball is the most important factor. Without it. You've got no chance. It's Maguire. Mathers, here he is again, chiming in. Tackled, though, by Hopkins. And the three there pushing him back. Referee shouts, held. Here's Duneman. Now, Danny Ward spins away from one, will be challenged from Tukey. Tukey comes back again with help from Joe Mabu, he's brought down. Stern face on Tony Ray. Sinfield. Heighton missed him, got the ball away to Duneman. Ward again, 10 metres away from the London line. Duneman to Sinfield. Here is Botham. And Botham backing himself. Become a lot more confident, this fella, hasn't he? Plays the ball to Burrow. Bailey, Sinfield, Maguire. Good defence. Closed him down then. Last tackle here for Leeds. Sinfield dropped the shoulder. London muscle up, surround him, can't get the ball away, that's the turnover. Well, not surprisingly, the scoreline 26-6, they go for the power play. You know that London have come up with some pretty basic mistakes. They just look completely out of sorts. Take nothing away from this Leeds outfit. Their defence has been pretty solid, they're working as a, as a unit. Can't say the same about the Broncos at the moment. Bradley Kualilawa, he plays the ball. That's Luluai. Short ball, oh, and an important tackle by Botham on Danny Williams. This is Sykes. Sykes gets London to halfway after four tackles. Luluai. Williams again. Dumps the ball back. Heighton. Heighton has got Duneman all over him. They made no progress then on that tackle. This is the last. They're on halfway. Luisi gets the ball away. Luke Dawn. Oh, Duneman actually tackled Luke Dawn without the ball then. He got away with it. And Maguire picks up the loose ball. Just a little bit of a lapse in concentration by the Rhinos. Here goes Lauatiti again. Great to see a second rower looking for work as well. We know his qualities as the offloader. Here's a big fella going on that blind side. And when Leeds utilise two runs down on the blind side, you usually get the link. It's with Duneman now. Back on the inside to Mathers. Mabu gets to Mathers, but he still manages to slip the pass to Duneman again. Mabu hunting once more. It goes to Ryan Bailey, and Bailey steps up the middle. He's got Maguire on his inside. Maguire will score under the sticks. Second try for Danny Maguire. Great support play, but wonderful stepping from the big, young prop forward, Ryan Bailey. Terrific run from Bailey. And Maguire with the coup de grace. Fantastic play by the prop forward. 
Full credit to Leeds, they kept the ball alive, but look at the London defence, and they still can't stop him. They still can't, they're, they're hanging around, what is he going to do? I'll tell you what he's going to do, he's going to step like a three-quarter, then straighten up, and look at the positional play by Maguire. We know his qualities of sidestepping and going through and finding the gap, but his ability to read the game is nothing short of superb. Just watch Al Maguire. He knows he's going back, he's going that way. Maguire said, I'm on the inside. Wonderful, wonderful effort. And Kevin Sinfield from bang in front doesn't make a mistake with those. He adds the extras. It's 32 points to six to the Leeds Rhinos. Well, interestingly enough, if you look at the records, if London are ahead by half time, they usually kick on to victory, but Leeds do an awful lot of damage in the second half of their games. They were led only once at the interval this year, and they lost, and that was against Wakefield. Eddie, we talked at half-time, just what sort of attack we see from Leeds in the second half. Seven people handle the ball then before Danny Maguire put the ball in. That's probably more what we're used to. That's really what we want to see from them, isn't it, in this second half? Absolutely. I mean, people might say, well, it's a bit one-sided when Leeds start playing like this, but it is fabulous, entertaining stuff to watch. Well, they had to work very hard to score, didn't they? They didn't just run out of the way, the London side. They, uh, they made it hard, but some good skills. London Leeds players offloading when they can look they look for that late offload in the tackle because that hurts the defensive side so much Unbeaten in the last 11 against London and they've lost just twice in 17 encounters That's a good deep kick. That's a 40-20 I think from Kevin Sinfield the wind at his back and they get head and feed Wonderful kick from Sinfield no pressure whatsoever, take nothing away from the ability of the kicker. He could see that the fullback not in a very good position at all. He was camped underneath his sticks, whilst this fella took it on the short blind side. Well, he's Super League's top kicker so far with the place kicks. And of course, he's Super League's top kicker and point scorer last year. Oh, well, Burrow just fired the pass straight into the face of Marcus Bay, and he apologises to his teammates immediately. Well, it certainly was a power pass, but you can see there that Marcus Bay had already decided to just step off the left foot. That was the dummy. He was coming back on the inside, and uh, I think more than likely, Beep Beep just said, sorry, I should have realised you were coming back on the inside. There'd have been no one there to stop him. Marcus Bay would have been well and truly on his way to the post for another try, <laughs> disappointed. Danny Ward on his way to the bench again to have that nosebleed stopped. So he goes off and Nick Scruton is the man who comes on. There's close links between these two clubs, by the way. Uh, no fewer than eight Leeds men have had their careers enhanced by loan spells with the London Broncos, including one who's out there right now, Liam Botham, who we mentioned earlier on. This is John Wells. Well, at 32-6, you'd feel that Tony Smith will say, well, we'll give Danny Ward plenty for the doubt and just let... No point in letting the Claret run all the way through. They'll be anxious to uh, enhance the impressive points difference, Leeds, if they can. London... Oh, that's poor. Well, it's play on, as you say, but that looked as though it had gone forward to me but who am I to judge Heighton good tackle oh, by Burrow wonderful, wonderful stuff isn't it another ball that's all over the shot that'll be back to six Luluai, he hasn't wiped the tackle count down yet Luluai, dancing his way down the middle flicks the ball away and this is Luisi and that, yes he has wiped the tackle count down now Heighton yeah. Oops. Oh, dearly me. Picked up by Duneman. It's all right when you use a dummy runner, but why on earth do you want to use a dummy runner in that position there? That forward should have been looking for it, keeping his eye on the football. These are professionals. Scruton. Second, clear! Mathers, dummy half. Lawatiti. Oh, stepping brilliantly again, Ali Lawatiti. I don't think he's put, got a sweat up yet. 
Maguire. Poaching steps away from Sykes. Strains it up. Can't get the ball away though, takes the tackle. Burrow. Sinfield over the top. Wells has a pop at it and Calderwood grounds him in the in-goal area. He never gives the chase up, Mark Calderwood, does he? He's become a specialist at it. Went through a dodgy period 18 months, two years ago. And full credit to the man for fighting his way back. One of the form wingers must have his eye on Great Britain at the end of the season. And he needs just one try for 100 in his career. John Keir, let's have a word from you about the opening 11 minutes, second half. Well, I think the signs are very ominous for uh, London because uh, the Leeds Rhinos are not only dominating uh, possession, Eddie, they're also dominating field position. And the more time that Leeds Rhinos spend within 20, 30 metres of the London Bronco line, the more tries they're going to score. So uh, all you can see it happening at the minute for the last 30 minutes or so is more Leeds Rhinos points. Burrow there finds Bailey. And Bailey, oof, really just put his hand in the face of the London defender. This is Sinfield and Maguire. No way through for Scruton. Burrow. And this is Poaching. I think they all want to get their name on the score sheet, don't they? Burrow dabs it to the in-goal area, and Luisi has taken over the line. Another, Again, another, another goal seven. line dropout, another set of six. Yeah, and it's an important one, and it's a... And remember, they're against the wind here. I know, it's a busy night, isn't it, for Tony Ray and uh, the fullback and Sebastian Luis is uh, realising that this is what it's like at the top of the competition. For a few weeks, it looked as though London perhaps were thinking maybe of consolidating a top six playoff. Steve, would you go for a short kick here? No, he's kicked it deep. At 32 6 though, if they're going to have any hope of winning the game, they had to get possession. I don't think they can stand another six tackles close to their own line. Good challenge though there by Williams on Marcus Bay. Good point there, Phil, but I think that uh, they've resigned themselves already and they just want to make sure that the ball gets as far away from the try line as possible. Burrow to Lauer TT. Burrow again, Sinfield. Here they come, Bailey. He's had a big game, this prop forward, Ryan Bailey. Impressed me tonight. Sinfield again, they'll come down the right channel this time. Maguire to close friend Mathers, who just gets away from the would-be tackle from Luke Dorn. And Mathers up the middle. Oh, he just presented the ball, though, into the arms of Mark Tukey. Luisi, welcome that. to the top of the Super League. Bailey, what a hit. Solid defence, isn't it? But again, Luke Dawn going high and the ball, they're just pushing them away. But it's not been a very good performance. There's McClendon. Ball is lost. Leeds have it back. This is Mathers. And from broken play, they will try and attack now. Zero tackle here. Here we are, guys. Well, they've certainly gone into the tackle, wasn't they? Uh, Nick Scruton. But at least he was going low, right into it. Yeah, Hamono couldn't hang on to the ball. It's another error. Well, that's amazing. Leeds have made the same number of handling errors as London. Nine apiece. Oh, Burrow will scamper away from Demi Half, using his pace and having the great presence of mind to keep on going when they were trying to swat him to the ground. That's a brave try from little Rob Burrow. He just injected the pace then, shot away from dummy half. Two or three of them tried to swat him like a gnat, and he just brushed away from them and was under the sticks. Embarrassing is about the only word I can come up with. Look at that, no work from the first and second markers, trying to go high. Did anyone go for the legs? Hey, no. Four times they had the opportunity. Look at the gap. Look at the lack of enthusiasm. Look at the high hits. No one going for those twinkle toes. Takes full advantage, this man. But it was shocking work in the first and second marker position. 
Sinfield adds two more points to his name and to the Leeds Rhino scoreboard. 38-6 now. Eddie, I think that the controlled approach that Leeds took to the opening 20 minutes, and we spoke about that, and the power and simplicity has caused problems. There's the mistake. Just not too many tacklers missing it. Burrow's coming around to score. So Burrow with another try. He really is benefiting, isn't he, from uh, this extended run in the first team, John? He is, yes. Now, you, you spoke about the errors, uh, Eddie. It's not only the fact the same number of errors, there's also another side to it. One is, when do you make them in the tackle count? If you make them early, it, it hurts you more. And also, which position in the field are you making the errors? And the Broncos inevitably coming up with errors in their own half. And that's why Leeds are just dominating the field position and are being so dangerous. Knock on, and Bailey not happy with the attention that he received then. He just put the ball down, Ryan Bailey, and he, he didn't like that for some reason. I think Danny Williams was trying to twist his ankle, Eddie. There is Danny Williams, who was on the deck, had hold of his ankle, certainly. Well, he's allowed to do that. Probably not happy with uh, the winger, Bradley Kaluwa. <laughs> who again? You heard it. I'll call him BQ from here. On. <laughs> well, why, why don't we take take a, an oath to call him Nick Bradley from from now? Mm -hmm. This is Luisi. Well, they've got to play with a bit of pride now, London. The game's gone. They know that. McClendon, ball in field. Three here, here. And uh, that is Lola here. Ooh, that was forward. Well, Harmono carries it on. And there's a chance here. Oh, the ball is picked up by Sykes, but he had his back to the play. He was running the opposite direction. Last tackle. Hopkins, McClendon, nice step. High kick. And behind his own line, it's easy for Marcus Pye. And away he goes, Mark Calderwood, trying to catch London on the back foot. Good tackle in the end from uh, Armour, but... Well, Second McClendon. effort, McClendon. He knew that he just had to stop the, the momentum. And again, they got himself in a, a decent position, did the Broncos, and just frittered it away. Lack of communication. We haven't seen the twinkle toes of Luke Dawn. Little glimpse of Thomas Luluai in the first half when he scored a, a nice try. But other than that, well, they've looked lost of London. Here is... Uh, Willie Poaching, Mark McClendon there with the tackling. He will be our guest, by the way, Steve-O, on Boots and All on Wednesday. Probably not the best time of the season to talk to him, but we'll be looking ahead to the match against St Helens Wednesday night. Join us for that. This is Mavers, meanwhile, for Leeds. Fedley was then by Laotiti. There goes Burrow again, finds Maguire. A dab down the line looking for Marcus Bai. And London in the shape of... Bradley, Kuali Lawa, decide to hack the ball dead. Or this will Bradley, please, as it should be now. Yeah, this will uh, please their coach, Tony Smith. The, the ability to just keep turning the team around. Little kicks into the corner, then high kicks. So two tries come from the kicks in the first half from the Rhinos. Well, this, has been, out. this has been a very solid performance without really stretching themselves, I feel. Oh, wonderful from Marcus Bai. Try for Richard Mathers. Marcus Bai picked the drop out from underneath the sticks up, took three men out, slipped the pass, and Mathers was the man in support. His 24th consecutive appearance, his fifth try of the year. Just bumped him off, didn't it? Held the ball to perfection. This is the dropout. Watch this. Got to make sure you get him. Two under one, left it. Huge gap on the outside. He'd be happy with that. Boom. Great offload, wasn't it? Well, this is one thing that will really lift the spirits. Quite a few people in Super League after that uh, loss to Wakefield, perhaps. 
started saying that the Rhinos were having a bit of a wobble. Liam Botham is going to have a kick at goal here. Remember, he kicked a goal in that 36-all draw against Leeds last year. And it was off the touchline as well, if memory serves. But he missed with that one. 42-6, though, Leeds ahead. They can, I suppose, enjoy the luxury of experimentation. Mathers with the try. And Richie Mathers got a try here in the 28-26 win against London in 2000. And two, a little bit closer on that occasion than it uh, is tonight. We're midway through this second half. There's no way back for the Broncos now. John Keir, if you were Tony Smith, would you now take the shackles off Leeds completely and say, look, let's show the watching world our skills? No, I'd continue to do what they've been doing, Eddie. They've been very, very effective uh, practising put into practice uh, on the playing field what they did on the on the training paddock and that's all they need to do is is be re relentless be ruthless and really turn the screw and the points will come Duneman the problem for McClendon he's down in back play he is our guest on boots and all Wednesday and another problem here because London have conceded another penalty. Well, it's sheer desperation now from the Broncos. Let's They're trying, they're trying everything just to hold people down. Let's hope McClendon isn't badly hurt. Hopkins just hanging on to the shirt collar. So Leeds are in an offensive position again. They're 20 metres away, and this is Duneman. And here is Scruton. Duneman again to Maguire and they miss out a couple and it goes on the bounce to Marcus by and it's easy no one at home they'd gone shopping they were down the head row and this guy just skips in into the corner it is very easy and it is extremely embarrassing for the London Broncos anyone at home Hello. Hello. Look at this. Uh, leave a message, Marcus, because there was no one at home. Phil Clark, have you ever experienced travel sickness like this? Because London cannot win away from home. Did you ever come across this in your career? No, I went to Sydney once with Great Britain and we didn't travel too well, but... Uh, <laughs> You're not on your own there, are you? It's a little bit good? different. Would they, I, I don't think it could be the travel sickness, really. Today, at the moment, they just don't look to... I mean, what's got, they've got to be careful here. If they don't improve their attitude and effort, I think, over the next 18 minutes, then they're going to be awfully embarrassed at the end of this match. Because all you can see is one-way traffic at the moment. They need to find something. I don't know what Nick bradley quali have thought there on the wing, why he came into Keith Senior, but defensively, they're making mistakes. The penalty on the fourth tackle didn't help them. As the kick goes wide now to the left from both of them. They really need to find some uh, some spirit. I know they won't win the game, but at 46-6, they, uh, they've got to do something because they've got a tough game next week. And obviously, habits die hard in, uh, in rugby like anything else. They need to improve the habits right now. And the London you know, supporters don't look too impressed, do well, they? Well, they have every right to be upset because... But it's such a different side at home. They've, they've put 72 points past Wakefield. For I was just about to make that point. So they, they, they're looking at that scoreline here if they don't shake their feathers because they are just not playing as a unit. But I picked it up early. Within 10 minutes, there was no spark in the forwards. There didn't seem to be any idea. You know, Tony Ray has been talking about this wonderful skill that they can produce in attack. But you've got to get your basics right. I think it was always going to be difficult, though, today. The team that came here to Headingley after they'd lost the home record would have to do something special to win. This time next week, we are in London for the visit of the Saints. Oh, this is... This is getting, it's embarrassing, Eddie. Mathers, another missed tackle from Luisi, and over the top to Senior, and Senior scores another try, second try for him. They've now hit ten tries past the Broncos. And there have been eight different try scorers. It's the missed tackles that are costing London dearly. And Leeds in the mood here to, to really go to town. If you want to play patty cake, then go to the beach. Look at this. Touch on the back. Another touch, another touch, another touch. They're supposed to hit them. 
and make the tackles count. They deserve a drubbing. They're getting one, Stevo. Look at that. Hormono just taps him on the shoulder. The attempt. It would be wonderful for me to say the Rhinos are absolutely scintillating. They're absolutely superb. But I, I can't because London is so bad. Well, I think you've got to give fair credit to Leeds for the, the style of play. And, I mean, if Liam Botham kicked the goals, it would be even worse than the 50 points that it is. And remember, their opening 20 minutes, Steve, oh, they ground it out. They, they waited. They wanted to see what London had to offer. Yeah, and they, they were, were offering plenty then. Of course they were, but they were still losing a situation where they, their defence was poor. John Keir... If you were the coach now of London, Tony Ray, what on earth can he do? Well, first of all, I'd have looked at them stood behind the, the post, Steve-O, and the body language of, of the group of players was absolutely terrible. They, were, they looked disinterested, and it, it really is a measure now of the character, not the rugby league ability, but of the character, just the fact that they can hang in there, they can show some mental toughness, somebody can put off a, a, a few good tackles, and they can just lift the intensity again because they really are struggling, and every time the Rhinos get the ball, they look as if they can score. John, you know in the boxing analogy, they say early in a fight a lot of boxers go with body shots because it takes it out of the opponents and you see it later in the fight. I wonder whether the power that Leeds played within the first 20 is now showing this evidence. Look at this, they are ripping London to shreds and it is Mathers with the try, his second, and Tony Ray has come down to the sideline to try and inject something into his players. It's to try a bit and inject late for some enthusiasm. Well, it is a bit late, but he has obviously embarrassed himself. And he doesn't want this to continue, if possible. Yeah, so it's a wet day now. It's draining, Eddie. It's cold. It's windy. And the Antipodeans in the London side really are not enjoying this. But they must show more pride in the shirt and also in the group of players that are out there. Well, isn't it amazing? We talk about this London side, 70 points against Wakefield, the same Wakefield that came here Eddingly a week ago, just over a week ago, and then beat the league leaders, and now we're seeing the league leaders just absolutely ripping them apart, and it is embarrassing. But they are world champions, they are champions of the Super League, you're very harsh on London and I can understand why, but this is a world champion side. And here's another kicker, Rob Burrow having a go. Both of them tried three times and missed. Here's Burrow, Sinfield off the field. And Burrow has missed, he's hit the post. They are absolutely fantastic side, we know that. But if you've got half the other side that are looking like dustbins that won't move... He is furious. Tony Ray has sent the message out that he is not impressed with this. Eddie, I also think as well what Phil was speaking about before that, that Leeds break, where I thought Leeds played it quite conservatively for the first 20 minutes, and it really has paid off uh, as the game's gone on. They've grown in confidence, and now they really are playing some super stuff. So we can be hard on London, but let's also applaud Leeds and the skills that they're showing. Absolutely, and look at them. You would think it was 6-4 in London's favour, the way that they are running onto the football. Barry McDermott, they're giving the Broncos a bit of a lesson. And this is poaching. And the ball has come free and gone backwards to Dunaman, and here comes Jamie Jones Buchanan. And Four. wide to Marcus Bai, and Bai steps in the challenges and scores another. Half the London side well, stopped because he thought he was a forward. Well, he's gone to okay. the video referee, so he but he wants to check about the knock-on. He cannot so even discuss the forward pass. Well, I think poaching has... has He's lost the ball, no doubt about it. He now wants to see whether it was going in a forward motion or did he go backwards? That'll be a knock on. Oh, no. That went backwards. You don't want to give this for some reason, Steve O. I think he's knocked on. There's no other reason. Poaching loses control. But the, doesn't the ball go backwards? No, I think it goes forward. John Keir, I coach's think he, view. I, I think he's trying to offload the football. He's trying to offload it in a backward direction. It, it catches one of the London players. If you just watch him, he tries to offload it in a it, backward direction. That should be play on. It hit the knee of the London man, didn't it? It, it did. certainly did. Play on. There was certainly a, a, the suspicion of a forward pass out wide to Parkers Pye, but we can't look at that. 
whether it's at his own knee or anything. Eddie. He'll give the try. Well, he's, he's not seen yet the it. touchdown, has he? He's not seen no, it at I the other end. The try. the try is given. <laughs> and Marcus Bai, that's his second try as well, and his sixth of the season. And Sinfield has returned to kick the goal. And now to then, make Burrows had a chance and Botham's had three. To make matters worse, watch the finish of this from Marcus Spy. That's how to kick a goal. Sinfield. <laughs> it's 60 points to six. My goal kicking position is quite safe, he <laughs> says to everyone out there. I've given you the chance. I don't know what Look at this. The offload. Two in there, and watch the finish. Watch Mr. By. That's not good defence. Well, Jamie Just Jones Buchanan was put on the backside, step. wasn't he? Bit of a step. Nice and steady. In a very good, strong contest, Marcus By would have gone like the clappers into the corner. But he knew all he had to do was just take a little step, and he would score. Five tries in ten minutes, Phil. Do you know, I think the more embarrassing it now becomes for the London Broncos, the better for next week, because they'll hit rock bottom here now, and next week they'll have so much to prove in their performance against St. Anne's, that the worse it gets here now, the more of a response I think you'll see from them next week. Yeah, they needn't worry, it's only Saints next. <laughs> knock on, knock on by Kevin Sinfield, they are human. After all, they're a very good side, John. I mean, you have all, three of you, been very critical of London, and rightly so with that scoreline, but this is a good team. This is an excellent team. I mean, uh, you don't go through all your home games last season without losing, and, and you don't, you've you gone through the first nine rounds of Super League and just uh, spilled one game. They're an outstanding rugby league team, but what's impressed me, obviously the handling ability, etc., but defensively, they've been very, very sound indeed of the Rhinos, and they're still putting that into... It, they're still applying that even at this late stage in the game. I wonder if the message from Tony Smith now is, let's concede no more points. Oh, little doubt, that's what he'll be thinking, and that is what he, he'll be wanting as well. This is David Hyten. Well, just look at that. That's for the match as a whole, and Leeds have been camped in London's half for nearly half an hour with ball in hand. London, nine minutes. And that's like about three boiled eggs, isn't it? End of story. They've just been... They don't been at the races. I know it's a big day, Grand National Day, but I'm afraid the, the, hurdles, the hurdles have been too hard for London to overcome. It's a play on. No, it isn't. They've stopped. A lot of here from going over for the try. The ball came out from the tackle, but the referee said the ball tackling arm did not hit the ground. Here comes McDermott then. He'll be loving this, Harry McDermott. I know that the Leeds fans, especially underneath his in the south stand, they are seeing... They were stunned, as I say, just over a week ago, but they have been outstanding, the Leeds. Oh, and Calderwood stepping out of challenge after challenge after challenge. They have been outstanding, and there's uh, over 14,000 inside Headingley tonight to see the London Broncos on a Saturday night. There were only 8,000 here last week for the game against Warrington, which is surprising. Maguire with the crossfield kick, Mathers is hunting this. Luisi gets to it, oh, and does well to release the pass. Look at that defence, right to the end. Yes, McDermott strongly into... Bradley Kualilawa. This is also a good opportunity. You talk about scoring points for Leeds, you know, points difference may take its toll in the in the rundown. Good break here. Hopkins. Good work from the second rower. Still going. Leeds eventually getting down. But this is also a point for a lot of the players, you know, to get up their tackle counts. It's Luke Dawn and ball comes in field to Lola here. Oh, the ball has gone. Oh, and Willie Poaching's going to drop on this. 
He gets to halfway. Forward pass. Just a little bit lazy. Not surprising. 60 points to six. Yep. Just overrun it. Did uh, Liam Botham. Well, the man of the match, obviously, is going to be a rhino. Amazing statistic tonight. 12 tries, leads have run in. And Mark Calderwood still is on 99. He's in the nervous 90s. He's still looking for his 100th career try. It often works that way. They've been so organised of the Rhinos in their defensive pattern. They're working hard for each other. Well, Williams did well in the end. Heighton helps it on. And the boo, but both of them is all over him. But gives away the penalty for the second shove. And McClendon limping a bit, but thankfully recovered from the heavy bang he took earlier. Finds touch with the penalty. Heighton. And here now comes Hormono. Well, it's amazing. The crowd underneath is Eddie. They're singing, My Old Man's a Dustman. <laughs> McClendon again, and almost through, but Nick Scruton did well to pull him down. He is Heighton. Now then, Luke Dorn. Leeds force him back. They will scrap right to the end. Leeds do not want to concede any points whatsoever. Their line is threatened, as it hasn't been for much of this match right now. That's four tackles gone, though. 39 missed tackles by London. And Harmono flicks the ball away, it goes backwards. Ooh, that was nearly a dangerous tackle. Yeah. He gets through a lot of defensive work, you know, does Rob Burrow. Realised just at the right moment, he's pulled out from it. Could have been a spear tackle. Sykes to height. Oh, his knock on, is it? No, off his, off his office. ankle, says the referee. And uh, Mathers. Carries the ball forward 10 yeah. metres and they get the penalty. Let's get down to Dave Hatfield. Which Leeds player, Dave, is going to win your Man of the Match award tonight? It's a two way split. We thought Ali Lowatiti might make all the difference tonight, and indeed he has done scoring one try, setting up another two. Very influential performance. And there's somebody we think has been even better. Ryan Bailey's been an absolute colossus for them. Great strength and presence. Never seen him look so good with the ball. He's our Man of the Match tonight, Ryan Bailey. Ryan Bailey then, and uh, very well deserved. This is Liam Botham. He's had an outstanding game. It's been a great performance from Bailey. He's been everywhere. Love to see the forwards looking for work. That's another advantage that Leeds have as well, that they work as a unit, both in attack and defence. Oh, oh, that's an error. Good hit by Sykes. Great hit by Paul Sykes on Chef Walker then. Ball spilled. Three minutes remaining. And that's high. High from Duneman on Joe Mabu. So London maybe will finish with a flourish, perhaps. No, no they won't. No, they won't. <laughs> They're just a Lee little Hopkins. bit too fancy for their own good then. Well, Lee Hopkins just really took his eyes off the football, and that's been, I'm afraid, the order of the night. Talented player. But they've given them no room to move. It's been one out football basically throughout the entire game from the Broncos. That's been brought about by the enthusiasm that's been shown by the Leeds defence. Well, can Lee. Oh, charge down. The kick from Maguire. I think they were looking there for Calderwood down the wing. Here goes Burrow. Oh, that's come away off Sykes. And London back in possession with two minutes to go. Here's it, Luisi, the full-back. If there's one player out there in the London outfit, you've got to say that can walk off this field with his head held high. It's got to be Paul Sykes. Gorn gets the ball away to Williams, comes back, takes the return. Leeds again muscling up in defence. Can they keep London out? Can they keep them down to just the six points? Heighton, they're going down the short side, are they? No, Heighton comes this way, but Sinfield's all over him. That's number four. Danny Williams waits. There he is. Now they go the short side. This is Hopkins. And he lost it there. Marcus Pye has the ball for Leeds. Well, 
A ten-man move, length of the field? Maybe not. I think that's what's needed now. Send the crowd home happy. It's pinging across to his right wing. Let's see Mark Calder go the length. You might be right as well because he has been screaming for the ball in the last ten minutes. And he, knows he wants it. On a night when so many tries have been scored and he's on this uh, threshold of the 100 career try. Well, what about the kick over and chase? Well, it might come in a moment. There's Sinfield. Back it comes to Maguire. Here is Burrow. Maybe they'll do the usual way. Mark Calderwood. And he's after it, isn't he? Managed to stay in the field of play. Plays the ball on the fourth tackle. Both of them. Finds Maguire. Maguire then on to Duneman. Duneman measures the kick, looking for Marcus Pai. It's over the top of Hopkins. Marcus Pai's after it. Marcus Pai will score the try and get the hat trick for the Leeds Rhinos. He hasn't given it yet. He's just going to check whether he's onside. But Duneman looked wide and measured the kick. He's not asking for onside, he's asking about the grounding. Well, I think the grounding's all right, but uh, I think he may. That's not a knock-on, that's fine. I think he might have been just in front of the kick. It makes no difference. Just to this guy, if he can pick up the hat-trick, that's no Nothing problem. wrong with that. Well, and the referee has not called for it, but uh, is he onside? Yes, he is. No problem. Another TRY will come up on the big screen. Well, he made his Leeds debut against London last year and grabbed a hat-trick, and here he is now, over 12 months on, and it's the same medicine for the London Broncos from Marcus Bai. 64 points to six. The kick to come for 66-6 and clickety-click. Anyone want to pressure me? Not really. I'll just take my time and put a kick up. On side, four points. We said it might be a busy day for the guy who looks after the scoreboard here at Headingley. It has been, and it will be a very sorry long trip down the M1 to London for those guys. So. Sinfield to make it all the 60 sixes but he has missed well a few goal kicks have gone west it could have been even worse for London as it is it makes pretty grim reading for the men from the capital 64 points to six the champions after their wobble against Wakefield their struggle against Warrington they are back on course a terrific win, 64 points to six.